What's up everyone, welcome back to another video, and in this one we're going to talk about root finding using Newton's method. So this is going to be a two-part series. The first video, we're going to look at the example of Newton's method, and we're going to keep it high level, talk about the math, the theory, look at some visual examples to get you a sense of what root finding is. And then in the next video, we're going to show how you're going to do this in the real world using SciPy. So let's get started. Like always, the slides will be available on my GitHub, and you can follow the link in the description to download and use however you like. So let's get started and describe what Newton's method is. Well, Newton's method is an iterative process for finding the roots of a function. And what I mean by roots are the points where the function crosses the x-axis. So a high-level concept of the process is what we're going to do is we're going to start by guessing an x-point, and we'll call that x1. Then what we do is we want to find a linear equation for a line that passes through f of x1 and also is tangent to f at that point. Once we have the linear equation, we're going to find the x-intercept of the linear equation. Now that x-intercept is going to be our x2, and we're going to start the process over again. Find a linear equation, move to the next x-intercept, and then eventually it should converge to the root of the polynomial. So if that last explanation was a bit confusing, I have a visual example that should help. So what I have here is a plot of the natural log of x. And you can see here that it has a root at x equals 1. So to start my process, I'm going to guess that x is equal to 2. So you can see here, x equals 2. I go to this point on the graph. And what I'm looking for is a linear equation that crosses through that point, but also is tangent to the graph at that point. So I have a slider here that creates that linear equation for me. So if I just move it one, it figures out what that linear equation is. And then we go to the x-intercept of that linear equation. And this is our new point, x2. So now we're going to start the process over again. We're going to find a linear equation that crosses through this point and is also tangent. So if I move the slider, we get that line. You can see it's tangent and it passes through. And then we move to our next point, x3. And you can see that we're getting closer to the point x equals 1. We started at 2, and now we're at 0.6. Now we're at 0.9. And as I increase the slider, we're moving closer and closer until we basically converge onto x equals 1. So you can see here, by the fourth iteration, we're already at x equals 1 to within three decimal places. So those are the basic concepts of Newton's method, and they're pretty easy to grasp, but the difficulty is in the detail of finding that linear equation. So now what I want to do is do a basic derivation of how to find that linear equation. So I'm going to start with a different form of the linear equation. So we're all familiar with y equals mx plus b, but instead we're going to use what's called point-slope form, where we have the slope and then we have one point on the graph. So x1 and y1 is at one point on the graph. And this is nice because we already have that point x1, y1. x1 is just our guess, and then y1 is just the value of the function at that point. So if we go back here, you can see here, this is x1 and this is y1. So now all we need to do is find the slope. And it's just going to be the derivative of the function at x1. So if we plug in all these values, we're going to get an equation that looks like this. y minus f of x1 equals the slope at x1 times x minus x1. And now what we want to do is find the point where this line crosses the x-axis. And to do that, we're going to set y equal to 0. And just to show you, if we show our first linear equation, you can see here when y is equal to 0, our line is crossing the x-axis. Now let's go ahead and do that, and if we set y equal to 0, and we're going to solve for our next point, which is going to be x2, we're going to get minus f of x1 is equal to the slope times x2 minus x1. So now it's just some simple algebra, divide by the slope, and then we'll move the x1 over, and we get our next point, x2, is equal to the first point, x1, minus the function at x1, divided by its slope. So in general terms, the way it's written is 
the next x point is equal to the previous x point minus the function at the first x point divided by its slope at that x point. Now let's see how we can code this using Python. So I've got an open cell at the end of this presentation and we can just write it all right here. And to save time, I'm just going to copy and paste some of it. So the first thing we're going to do is our import. So like always, import numpy as np. And we're also going to import a function to calculate the derivative. So from scipy.mist, we're going to import derivative. Then we need our first x guess value and then also a array of x values. So x sub n is going to be 2. That's our starting guess. And then our x array is going to go from 0 0.2 to 2.2, and it'll have 500 points. And the reason I'm not making this 0 is because the natural log is undefined at x equals 0. Now we need a function for our natural log. So I have just a quick one right here. Our function is going to be f of x, and it's just going to return the natural log of x. All right, so now what I want to do is write a function that computes the next x value based on Newton's method. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to call it x next, and what it's going to take in is f. It's going to also take in our x array, and then it's going to take our guess. Cool. So the first thing I want to do is compute the slope. So the slope, the way we do that is we're just going to call that derivative function. And the way derivative works is you pass it a function, you pass it the point you want to compute the derivative at, and then we also have to give it this dx. So dx is an interval in which the derivative is going to be computed over, and by default it's set to 1, and 1 is too big for us because we're working really close to the origin and the function natural log of x is undefined for values 0 or less than 0. So with the dx of 1, we could run into problems. So we have to decrease it a little bit. So I'm going to make it 0.1. And then all we need to do is return the, so it's going to be the previous guess, x sub n. And then we subtract f of x sub n divided by the slope. So if we go back to our equation, you can see that the next point is equal to the previous point minus f of x at the previous point divided by the slope at the previous point. That's what we have here, the previous point minus f of x at the previous point divided by the slope. Now I want to write a for loop to compute x next over and over again. So the way I'm going to do that is we'll do for n in range and we'll do six attempts because that's really all that's needed for this example and what i'll do is i want to print out the x value so we'll do x sub uh, a value that we'll format and we're going to say that's equal to um, another value and we're going to format it to display six decimal places and then what we'll pass here is n plus one and then this will be x sub n. Now I want to call our x function. And the way we do that is we'll say x sub n is equal to our x next. And now what we pass to it is going to be f, then our x array, and then our, our previous value. Now, if we run this, we should get a list of the x values as they converge to the true value. And if you remember, the true value is going to be x equals 1. This is where the natural log crosses. So let's go ahead and run this. So you can see here we start at 2, then we move to 0 0.6, then we move to 0 0.9, and then we're just closing in on 1. So by the sixth iteration, we're at 1 to within six decimal places. And just again to show you here, we start, or this is our point, point 0.61 point here, then this is our point 0.91, and then we're just converging closer and closer to x equals 1. So that's going to be it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one where we're going to look at the built-in functions in SciPy for computing roots. 
And if you have any questions, you can comment below. Don't forget the Facebook group also. And I'd highly recommend you download the notebook and play with it for yourself. I know this stuff can be a little confusing, but the best way to learn is to do it and play with the code yourself. So stay tuned for the next one, guys, and I'll see you later.